Hello, my name is Mitch and I draw Blood Force, and we're back with Blood Strike number three, chapter four in the Blood Brothers crossover. No, it isn't Christmas, it just feels like it. And man, I was kind of excited to do this crossover, and looking at it now, it's like, why? <laughs> Nothing happens. I don't know what I was expecting. And, like, I'm still kind of excited to get to Extreme Prejudice after this, which I've never read. And I know it's going to be more of the same. But, like, you know, oh boy... We're going to be crossing over with Team Youngblood and Supreme. And, you know, yeah. That, that, that'll, be, that'll be great. That's what it'll be. <laughs> but if you enjoy the channel or you want to support me as an artist, best thing you can do is if you open up the description. There's a couple of links there. First one will take you to my Patreon. And if you were to subscribe there, that's where all of the Blood Force pages go. As well as these videos before they get uploaded to YouTube, usually a week or so in advance, and any behind the scenes or Patreon exclusive stuff. Also, commissions are open over on my Instagram. So if you want to DM me there or if you want to email me, then that's how you would get your own Blood Force artwork. But back to this turkey. So, okay, Blood Strike number three. This is September. Of 1993. That's quite a bit after the last one. The last one came out in June. So we've got a two month, well, almost like, yeah, I guess like three month gap there. All right. That's a little strange. I wonder why that is. Probably the quality is through the roof on this one. That would be my guess. And that's an okay cover. That's about as much as I can really say for it. I mean, it's. Yeah, no better or worse than the Bloodstrike number two cover. All right, so Rob Liefeld doing the writing, full writing. Wasn't Eric Stevenson doing that before on Bloodstrike? I think he was. Oh, there we go. Eric Stevenson's script. And Rob Liefeld does the plots. All right, that's fine. Dan Fraga doing the pencils. Inks by Marlo Alquiza and Jonathan Sibal. I'm not familiar with either of those names. And then colors by Byron Talman, who did the colors on the first two, which were okay. Something's going on, though, with these colors, because these are getting, like, washed out. And weirdly, Dan Fraga does a worse version of um, Snowman Cold Snap than Merritt Michaels, by the looks of it. We look at the end here. He's got no chin whatsoever. He doesn't really have much of a chin there. I think a lot of it is I I kind of dig where the shadows got placed on snow on the Mara Michaels version. And here they're a bit more random. But we get the uh, classic Larson start, so that's splash page, double splash page. That's all right. And this is the first time they mentioned that this is Cold Snap. So, there we go. And they're really committed to the icicle brows here. So now, Deadlock is, uh, is okay. Ooh. Just put that right across the seam, eh? It's not like you wouldn't have known. He would have had to draw that on two separate pieces of paper. But now Deadlock is committed to helping out Cabot. And, yep, yeah, Shogun takes a shot, doesn't really do anything. And um, Cold Snap doesn't seem to be doing anything uh, cold-related anymore, so he might just be a big, strong guy now. Hard to say. But, yeah, these icicles kind of coming off him here. That does not look great. And Thermal's like, Cold Snap bought us the time we needed, now let's use it to our advantage. So they go in and, and they get punched. I guess that, that advantage didn't last too long, eh? This is an alright page layout. I mean, it is, you know, panel one, two, three. That works out okay. And we're going to cut from there. Now that we're starting the fight. But even as Battlestone struggles to withstand Cabot's onslaught, we turn to a deserted island in the heart of the Caribbean. So we're, we're, we're just going to get away from the fight. Because why wouldn't we do that? Where uh, Lethal and Seahawk are teleporting to one of Battlestone's hidden safe houses in the Caribbean. 
So his, his, his house is in L.A., and he's got a place in the sure. And last time we saw Lethal and Seahawk, they were falling out of a plane, and Seahawk had a hole in his stomach. And I'm pretty sure he had no helmet anymore. Because he kind of impaled Cabot with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's no helmet there. That's okay. What are we going to look for? Continuity here? I don't think so. So, uh, Lethal has brought Seahawk here so they can load up on weaponry before they go and take on Bloodstrike. Who are still just confronting Brigade. And yeah, um, so yeah, Seahawk has his, his helmet back and is completely healed up from getting shot. We're just not going to bother with that anymore. So Lethal addresses Rome uh, again, which weirds out Seahawk. So we're going to remember that bit at least. That, uh, yeah, Lethal shouldn't have access to something called Rome. And Lethal's response is, don't worry about it, it's better that you don't know. So we're just setting things up, and you, you know it's not going to pay off in a way that's interesting. It's just going to be, yeah, we were part of the program, so now I have access to Rome. Something like that. I'm undead too. Yeah, probably not that. And Seahawk asks for uh, her to explain to how it is she knows Battlestone, and why she's even involved... And, you know, frankly, why I should even trust you. And she's like, I never said you should. It's okay, I'll, I'll leave, I guess. Because he can do that. He can just fly away. But, you know, doesn't do that, apparently. He just stays and yells at her. So she explains that she met Battlestone after he was discharged from Youngblood. So that would have been after Youngblood number zero. And that's a weird kind of tangent, because that is the same person. You, you maybe should have just drawn a whole head. But then again, you drew this whole head, or, well, two halves of heads here. I don't know. This doesn't work. <laughs> it, it looks like, yeah, she's got squish face. So she's saying how when he formed Brigade with Seahawk and Cold Snap, who are the money behind Brigade, remember, the potential for serious harm to the government's power structure is even greater due to the media coverage Brigade was attracting on an increasingly more frequent basis. And, okay, so why do you drag us into this? Because you and your brother could give him the one thing he didn't have, the money to fund his own private war against the government. So we haven't seen any evidence of that whatsoever. But apparently, Brigade's whole deal is to fight the government. News to me. And they want to take him out because he knows... Dirty secrets. So, things like the fact that he's been brought back from the dead. Ba you know, Battlestone as well. And this setup just does not work. Maybe if he'd flipped it the other way, but by putting Lethal on this side, and she speaks first. But it's, yeah, and where do I flip over here? This is how you're supposed to read it. It doesn't work at all. Yeah, no, just kind of vague statements that, you know, like, the, oh, the American government does horrible shit when, when taxpayers aren't looking. And Battlestone knows about it because he's, un he's undead and he was part of it. Okay. Like, that would have been a, a good opportunity to say some stuff. I, you know, we have the, the Project Born Again thing. Okay. Anything else? No? Okay. So that's, yeah, it explains why Battlestone's skin is yellow, because he's a corpse. And asking why Bloodstrike doesn't have the same thing, uh, vanity, pure and simple. So, okay, they wear makeup everywhere, I guess, or have treatments. So they load up with some weapons, and they roam on out back to Gate Industries. Back to face punching. This is all fine. Dan Freck has figured out how to do double page spreads now. To a reasonable extent. Like, this is a, this is a dirt simple big punch, you know? It works fine. It, it, and, and this is... But, but they tend to fuck this up. So, good job there. Um, another big punch. And Cold Snap looks tiny. Like, even if you were to put this in front of Shogun, he wouldn't cover him, even though he's, you know, closer to you. And Dan Fraga has given up on trying to do 
the, the chin icicles. And then we got four play going after Boone. I guess this is something you can do if you don't want to try to figure out how the body bends is just black him out. I guess it's allowed. And he gets out of it by having a single Wolverine claw. Um, I, I guess that's, I don't know if that's his power or what the deal is there. Or like, is he, is he a weapons guy? I don't know. Yeah, gets tackled by Tag. Um, I feel like this is a, a Liefeld assist composition. <laughs> that feel that seems like one of his kind of deals. And if I think if if Fraga had put it together, it probably would have been a bit more stiff. Weird color treatment here. I don't know who whose idea that was. So Battlestone knocks out Tag and her weird bug eyes. We'll mention the bug eyes a bit more later. So what was he doing? He was getting punched by Cabot, was he not? Yeah, so he's just... Cabot just left him alone for a while, I guess? Forget that? Maybe. And Battlestone tells him he's being too reckless. What the hell is going on here? Are these the braids? Is that the idea? Is that how he's been drawing them? Oh, I didn't even notice that shit. Okay. <laughs> Fucking floppy bunny ears. And yeah, Cold Snap is fighting Shogun again. And again, Shogun is just getting tinier and tinier with every panel. There, he looks like he was perched on Shogun's shoulders. And he knocked him off. And again, not using cold powers anymore. And it gets blown through the wall where stasis is being kept. And Cabot is all pissed off because Battlestone's talking shit about the government for Project Born Again. And then he goes and uses Project Born Again, which is fair. And again, that's allowed, I guess. Just draw, if you're not sure how to draw boobs so they look like they have weight, just draw circles. Shiny circles. Put lots of shines on them. Perfectly fine. And we learned that Cabot was uh, brought back by, through Project Born Again by Battlestone. And he's like, I'll never forgive you for making them bring me back, for turning me into the monster I am today. No way I'm letting you do that to someone else. Not now, not ever. And see how it goes. That's what you think. So he is going to let people bring other people back. All right. That's it for that issue. And holy shit, there's so many questions. And Eric Stevenson is going to try and put on his, his best, you know, Stan Lee smile. And like, he, he just comes short of calling people true believer. So we you got, does Deadlock have any powers other than being tough? And Deadlock is a seasoned warrior, Jason. Pull your head out of your ass. <laughs> Doesn't say that part, but you know, still just the, and, and he addresses him a couple of times here. But um, he's highly skilled in many different areas of combat. So no, he's, he's just tough and he can fight. What are the things over Tag's eyes? All the world craves an answer to the most perplexing question. So everybody has been asking, what the fuck is up with Tag's eyes? And they just don't, I don't know, they look cool. That is actually what he says. It's just part of her costume, and they look cool. I, I don't have an answer for you. I'm sorry. I don't understand what they're doing. They just draw things. <laughs> uh, who is Boone, and how is he related to Battlestone's past? References Brigade Number Zero, which should be coming out uh, which, well, should have come out a couple of months before this, I guess. Will you guys please give the knight his own miniseries? This is by Brian Jones. There is more knight in here. Dude who drew knight is Chuck Jones. I see right through you, Brian Chuck. Chuck Jones should be given a race. The start, this is totally somebody related to Chuck Jones. If not Chuck Jones himself. 
Why'd you have to kill off Devil and Athena? They were all too cool. They showed up on like three pages. Because it makes for a cool story. What exactly? This is all night questions. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this one's funny. Two questions for you. Would you ever do a crossover with Bloodstrike and X-Force? Would you ever do X-Force again? No response. <laughs> and this is, yeah. Isn't Deadlock part of the four first appearing in Youngblood number one? Bloodstrike number four and five are not to be missed, Jonathan. Uh, what? You Are you referencing? You're referencing something. The answers to the diabolical Deadlock dilemma will be answered in true extreme form. See, he thinks he's Stan. Or again, he got a talking to. That this is not how an editor responds to letters. I wonder. And we get down here. How did Lethal teleport onto Bloodstrike's ship? And read the response to Jason's letter, Andrew. And so this Jason? It must be this one. But we're getting... He, he, he gets ebbs and flows where he's able to muster up an exclamation point and then when he's really not. In the Youngblood series, Deadlock had a ponytail. Did he cut it off? He must be confusing his ribbon with a ponytail. He did have a ribbon on the back of his head that he doesn't have anymore. And they don't mention why he doesn't have it. It just, I guess, you know, nobody wants to draw it except for Rob. And then why does Tag have those things on her eyes? I think Deathblow has a place in Bloodstrike. Are there any plans for him to join? Nope. Okay. We, we, hit, a, we hit a bit of a low there. What is up with Deadlock? He is with Bloodstrike and the Four. Will the Four and Bloodstrike go up against each other? Now, there would be a cool battle. Yeah. <laughs> would something happen? It seems unlikely, other than punches. Now, who knows, Mike, in this extreme universe that we're unfolding, anything can happen. It doesn't, but it could. And is Bloodstrike going to go up against Youngblood, Stormwatch, or Wildcats in the near future? And, and always a possibility you'll have to satiate yourself with a Supreme slash Bloodstrike battle for now, which is Bloodstrike number 5 to 7. And I think those actually are kind of fun. Because, they mention here, in the next issue, Keith Giffen is going to come on board as the writer, and Keith Giffen is quite a bit more interesting as a writer than Rob Liefeld or Eric Stevenson. All right, so then we get back to the night with Chuck Jones, who deserves a raise. Oh, man, I guess he interrupted these two smooching. And again, this all, yeah, this looks like just submission stuff. Maybe a little bit better than that now. This, uh, this panel looks fine. It's also very easy. And it looks well-practiced, because that's like the standard, you know, glare shot, right? Everybody should be able to draw that first. If you can't draw that, that's, you know, you need, you need to get that down before anything else. And he gets to floating in a back-to-tank, and he's told he's going to get sent back out into the field with new recruits. And one of the recruits is Rival, who he has, I, I guess he's... he's Commander Ironside's rival. That seems and Militia, who gets completely ignored. And just like next we have Militia, who has skills and stuff, and hi, and rival. And they're gonna they're gonna send them out, and he's not happy about working with him either. And um nothing happened. Okay. But Rival was introduced. So there we go. Then we get Team Youngblood number one coming out soon by Chap Yape. Honestly, after this, this looks pretty good. Like I said, I've never been a Chap Yape fan, but it, it, it beats this stuff. And they, oh, we get a profile on Chuck Jones. He's 23. Okay. And he, he should still be a little better than this. Favorites, Frank Miller's work, Independent Film, Cypress Hill, Public Enemy, Fishbone, Allison Chains, Mom's Cooking, Mr. Ed, Jack Kirby, Gil Kane, Michael Golden, Kevin Nolan, Rick Leonardi, and Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel does draw some pretty sweet comics. 
despises racism. <laughs> Talk shows featuring racists and racism. Unintelligent people with big mouths and people who ask him if he drew Bugs Bunny. Ah, that would be... Yeah, there is a Chuck Jones who drew... Okay. Okay, I was pretty sure that was the name. So, good to know. Good to verify. And, I mean, he's a 23-year-old guy who doesn't want to piss off his new employers. He's not going to say anything interesting there. Okay. Oh, I think this is profit number three or something. Yeah, that should be progressing now. We should actually should be getting close to plat on that. But uh, that is going to do it for Blood Brothers Part 4. Anything really happen in that? Eeh. Not a lot. Yeah, no, they nothing happens in these. It's basically just a long issue. <laughs> you know, where, <laughs> where where they get in a fight and then they run away and they get in a fight again. And and some guys run away so that they can uh come back and get in that fight again. So I wonder what'll happen in issue three. I bet you we'll get revelations and it will be um plot twists. And not just punching. I'm quite sure. I have faith. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notifications. Go follow me on Twitter. Uh, more importantly, go and subscribe on Patreon. That's where all the Blood Force pages go. Uh, that's also where all these videos go before they get uploaded to YouTube, usually a week or so in advance. As well as any behind-the-scenes Patreon-exclusive kind of stuff. Also, if you head over to my Instagram, commissions are now open. So if you want to get your own Blood Force artwork, that's the way to do it. But that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.